my fellow schizotypals, welcome back to High Lit. We're looking more professional by the moment, and just thanks for tuning in. Um, today we're going to be going through a couple of topics as usual. Um, I have everything ready on my Twitter, but I'm just going to go through um, pining, which is a very interesting terpene, which is in pretty much every plant, but especially cannabis. It's one of the most um, popular uh, compounds within that category in cannabis, found in cannabis. Uh, and then we're going to go through the Toads again, which is my comic play I'm working on, and we're going to go through some music by my friends. What could be more fun? Um, so let's just get into it. Um, first off, let's talk about this. So this is the Patreon. This has been launched. This is ready. If you want to support the show, please go here because this is like, you know, the thing. Um, content I have, the Toads is just available to be read. Uh, got the novel, uh, Cave, which is from, like, 2014, and then, like, old post from when this was first, uh, when this was first launched, you know, so. Um, yeah, so we're just retooling this. This is the best way to do that. That's it. Uh, if you want to talk, obviously, we can talk. I mean, like, that's whatever, but this is, uh, this is my Twitter, and I wanted to, you know, pull this up and start using this as a way to... Uh, just gather stuff. So the link's right here. And this is the A Pining, a never ending story. So it's very interesting. But like the points, so like the gist of it are going to be on the tweets. And that's why I wanted to just show these off is that I think you can use them for just an introduction. And then we'll go through the actual text of the study. But here's just a photo of like, you know, so pining is a derivative of plants. You know, so like whether that comes from cannabis or a flower or what have you, uh, that's where pining comes from. That's what it is. It's a natural derivative. Um, and then this can, you know, it has the antibacterial effect, it has an anti tumor effect, it has an insectidal effect, and then it can also be made into these things. So, like, these are developed terpenes. So, you got your limonene, your terpenol, etc. And the introduction to this, so we can just look at the, the top. So it's a never-ending story. The abstract is that it represents a member of the monoterpene class and is highly distributed in higher plants like conifers, juniper, and cannabis. Uh, pining has been used to treat respiratory tract infections for centuries. Uh, furthermore, it plays a crucial role in the fragrance and flavor industry. Um, in vivo assay, assays have shown in a uh, selective profile for antibacterial and insectidal insectidal uh, activity respectively um so it, it's gonna be focusing on the flavor compounds and scaffold hopping base of the pining corn dome dome domain yeah but this is why i'm using the tweets is that i think it does like you know helpful to just break down to the things that we can easily discuss like uh, natural compounds are still a major source of the drug discovery, like aspirin is from a willow root. Uh, they consist of biologically pre-validated structural features with polypharmacological properties. Based on their various chemical structures and biological properties, terpenes have raised the attention of medical chemists as potential fragments, new lead com compounds, and active pharmaceutical uh, ingredients. One blockbuster from the terpene class used for medicinal purposes is cannabidol, isolated from cannabis sativa and formulated into a commercial product. But, well, <laughs> also, so, uh, a lot of medicine comes from plants. Plants are very, very crucially ingrained in that. And, like, people talk about, like, Chinese medicine. It's like, that's essentially what we're doing. We're just more extreme about it. And the idea, the reason why I bring that up is that, like, our understanding of PTSD has to do with the neurotransmitter anandamide. And, like, a lot of neurotransmitter uh, research was done after we discovered THC, after we had isolated THC and CBD, because through doing that, we could trace those substances, and through that, found the endocannabinoid system, which interacts with endocannabinoids, like the neurotransmitter, anandamide, and disruptions in that is directly correlated to PTSD. So even if you don't believe in weed as treatment, weed as research allows us to better understand the brain and chemistry and all those things in general. So it is a major source for drug discovery, even without cannabis as a treatment method. The treatment methods we used are informed by research that we have done, or at least was introduced to us via cannabis. Um, 
So, based on their various chemical structures and biological properties, terpenes have raised the attention of medical chemists as potential fragments, new lead compounds, and active pharmaceutical ingredients. One blockbuster from the terpenes class used for medicinal medical purpose is uh, cannabidol. Yeah, 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 we already talked about all that. Much smaller but nevertheless important, apinine, a so-called monoterpene, is of high interest for medical use but also of high industrial and commercial value. Um, pinene is a bicyclic hydrocarbon consisting of two isoprene units resulting in the sum formula of C10H16. Several isomers of pi pinene are described in the literature. From each structural isomer, um, so I think that the reason why we got this in the bottom yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that this is the most important part, but then we can get into this, which is just, you know, a further understanding. It's a, it's a, it's another, uh, it's another visualization of the synthesis of pinene and what it can be synthesized into. But, uh, so why is it a molecule of interest? And based on recent studies and controversial biological data, a review of about a pinene as a molecule of interest is needed. Although this simple molecule has been known for decades, publication numbers of apinine-related research are steadily increasing. In this review, we aim to highlight the chemical synthesis, summarize biological activities, and its synergistic contribution as a pharmacological uh, adjuvant. So synthesis and building blocks. In plants, the biosynthesis of pinene occurs via head-to-tail condensation of two isoprene units. Um, so it, it's a flavor tool. You know, but like the most interesting thing about this passage to me is finally terpene, terpentine is used as a starting point for the synthesis of uh, aziridines, secondary uh, amines applied in oxium, isers as uh, herbicides and insectides. So this is a biotransformation of pinene leads to favor products by bacteria retains uh, regulatory permission to be labeled as a product of natural origin. But terpene is a, you can develop pinene into terpene and it's a starting point for herbicides and insecticides, which is an alternative use of, you know, it's an alternative to these things. Um, I was thinking about something, but I got lost in thought. Uh, so scaffold hopping and new chemical en entities. Scaffold hopping, a computational approach, can help to synthesize new chemical entities inspired by the bioactive natural compound with an improved binding affinity. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What I was going to go into is uh, they have... So all of these screenshots are from this study. Um, but this is, uh, you know, things... These are the studies that they have about these conditions with pinene. You know, so neuroprotective, gastroprotective... Uh, apototic, uh, anti-tumor, you know, so it's like all of this research that they have right there. I think that's very, it's very useful. You could obviously spend like an entire week on all of these studies and just going through it and like trying to make sense of it. But that's the advantage of going to uh, medical professionals and like research professionals is to be like, oh, they can actually do this stuff. Uh, and it makes it easy for you and me to just read through stuff that we can grab. Scaffold hopping, uh, which is a computational approach, uh, has determined that derivatives of pinene amino ester show high anticonvulsant activity at 10 milligrams per kilogram with low toxicity. The possible mode of action is activating acid and clernergenic receptors. Uh, Yang et al. isolated two new involatile pinene derivatives from Angelica, and they showed potential anticoagulative activities, which was related to the pinene structure. Further, pinene derivatives inhibited hepocellular carcinoma. Um, so it affects various biological processes. It was tested against gram-negative and gram-positive bacterial sprains, and activity against uh, staph was observed. Uh, among gram-negative bacteria, uh, e. coli was the most susceptible strain to pinene with a moderate bacterial activity of 98 UG per milliliter. Uh, furthermore, apinine had an antifungal potential. Uh, pinene was more effective against candida species than the positive reference uh, fungicide clotrimazole. So again, like we're talking about how cannabis can be used uh, in terms of like diabetes, uh, schizophrenia, autism and all these terrible medical conditions and again like we don't know for sure but we're talking that's what we're talking about in the show is like we're trying to see the medical literature and see a pathway for these ideas um also tolstikanova tolstikova is a cute name but uh the point that i'm bringing up here is that 
So the reason why we want for diabetic neuropathy, neuropathy, the reason why we want people to use low dose CBD over other medications is that that will have a much more tolerable side effect profile um, than the current medications that we have. And so if we're seeing that we can also like, you know, start talking about antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, um, things like that. It's like, okay, like maybe we can really start to do this because also a, while all the bacteria, antibacterials that uh, are the anti, you know, the soaps that we make create these superbugs that cannot fight back against our antibacterial. I assume that natural products that have antifungal property or antibacterial property, like hardwood, um, aren't really going to be adapted around um, because it's already been in nature and it's more of like a, uh, it's not like it kills it off. It's like it fights it back. Um, but maybe I could, that's entirely just bullshit. So, you know, I don't know. Um, moreover, pinene exhibited anti-inflammatory and antioxidant activity. The target compounds were enabled to inhibit the protein expression of the inflammatory mediator, nuclear, big science words, tumor necrosis factor, and uh, da, 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 da. the suppression of other inflammatory me uh, mediators. Um, Induced inflammatory responses in mouse parental uh, macrophages, macrophages and inhibition of inducible nitric oxide synthesis and glycooxygenase. Uh, were described. Uh, Bozanana et al. showed that pinene had potential antioxidant effect in cells evaluated with blah, 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 blah. Uh, additionally, numerous studies analyzed the neuroprotective effects of pinene. Uh, since many drugs on the market for the treatment of Alzheimer's, epilepsy, Parkinson cause severe side effects, there is a focus on new agents. Pine has the potential to reduce symptoms of neurodegenerative disease. The neuroprotective effects in uh, mice resulted, so it's like uh, pining given to mice with damage, enhanced learning and memory function. Uh, Pining was further involved in the synthesis um, of acetylcholine and oxidative responses. The enhanced memory in Parkinson's disease in male rats was due to the antioxidant and anti ant guys, uh, increased dopamine concentration due to the inhibition of the monoamine oxidase system. Uh, so, oh. So even if terpenes uh, as a natural compound, uh, as natural compounds are generally considered to be safe, they are able to change membrane fluidity or cross membranes leading to cell death. Furthermore, monoterpenes may exhibit, exhibit hepatotoxic properties. Even though this knowledge is mainly based on animals, uh, studies in animal models, the metabolism of terpenes and their liver toxicity in human cells should be definitely evaluated since the use of terpenes is increasing. Thus, to ensure safety, careful risk assessment has to be carried out prior to the use of terpenes. However, to date, there is a lack of available information about the cytotoxic potential of pinene on human cells. Only a few reports have assessed the cytotoxic effects on human cells. Apinene showed low cytotoxic activity on, humo, on human with a half maximal concentration. Uh, the analysis of the activity showed that Positive pinene exhibited microbacterial, anti-malarial, and anti-inflammatory activity. Um, the against E. coli and staph. Uh, in addition, activity against MRSA with a minimum inhibitory concentration was reported. Uh, as suggested previously, positive pinene acts uh, uh, via inhibition uh, in bacteria. Furthermore. Uh, they demonstrated stronger antifungal potential against candida uh, par parapilosis and these other conditions. While the negative one didn't show as much, in contrast, the negative uh, the negative showed antiviral activity. Negative pinene in inhibited the infectious bronchitis virus um, among several investigated. Uh, bicycle, uh, <laughs> bicy bi bicyclic monoterpenoids, terpene, <laughs> uh, positive pinene and negative pinene were strong inhibitors um, of various conditions. The lack of ox oxygenated functional group and the endocyclic double bond were important for the inhibition of the enzyme activity. Both might be potential antagonists um, and might be interested interesting in the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. And then Finally, to finish it off, 
targeting cancer. Effort to co-administrate apinine with anti-tumor agents is still limited. The co-administration offers several advantages over the anti-tumor drug alone, such as reduced side effects due to lower concentration on the active pharmaceutical substance. Furthermore, the, sens uh, furthermore, the sensitivity of non-small cell lung damage or lung sensor cells too was increased with pinene. The synergistic effect of pinene and paxilatel was able to re-empower the already attenuated anti-tumor drug by enhancing the effects on the cell cycle at rest and stimulate uh, apoptosis. By biocidal and herbicidal activity, essential oils and phytochemicals have long been investigated as eco-friendly alternatives to synthetic uh, biocides and herbicides, respectively. Uh, especially pine-rich essential oils showed widespread activity against uh, different er organisms. However, synergistic effects by hydronated monoterpenes and minor compounds have been have to be considered and evaluated carefully. Recently, contrast uh, and fumigant tox, uh, toxicities of pure pinene against maize uh, sta stiff and also pine wood were reported. So that's uh, that's uh, that's all the things that I had selected out of that study. I think it's a wonderful study. I think it's very very fascinating. So please check that out on your own time. But that was like basically just the uh, short of it that I could manage to get into a tweet. Uh, I don't know why my nose is so itchy. I don't know. I'm going to, sorry. I'm sorry. But, you know, better do that than to just continually be uh, playing with it. So this is uh, something that just irritated me because uh, this is a 2018 thing uh, from Cambridge. Um, and, you know, they were just doing cannabis and psychosis. What do we know and what should we do? And the thing that just really pissed me off was, of course, association does not prove causation. However, one by one alternative uh, explanations have gradually been disproved. Patients do not start using cannabis to self-medicate their psychot psychotic or prodromal symptoms or side effects of drugs, but rather use it for the same reasons the rest of the population, principally for its high. Uh, the risk of psychosis remains after controlling for personality disorder and use of other psychotogenetic, I like psychodemometic more. Um, some overlap uh, between genes carrying susceptibility to schizophrenia and to drug use has been reported, but insufficient to explain more than a fraction of the relationship. The only reason I got into smoking weed was to control psychotic symptoms. And what I would say by psychotic symptoms, I don't like... I hate that that's the term that they use because it sounds like you're about to kill somebody, but it's like, no, it's like general feelings of numbness, no sense of like time, uh, no sense of what a day is, no sense of social relations, just like a complete numbness and disinterest in the world where it's like, you don't want to get out of bed because you don't want to have hair. You don't want to eat. You don't want to breathe. You hate teeth, you know, that sort of psychosis where it's like, you're not even a human being at that point. You're just like this thing that's like, I just, I want time to go away. Uh, that's how I was just growing up the entire way. Uh, that's how I always felt. I smoked weed, all of a sudden I'm like, wow, green is a pretty color, you know? And like that I see as like an improvement of the symptoms. And I just find that this statement so fucking arrogant that patients do not start using cannabis to self-medicate their psychotic or prodromal symptoms. I start, like I literally was suicidal until I started smoking weed. And I know that this is anecdotal, but this is a fucking, this is a bullshit sentence. So I'm not refuting a claim here. I'm not refuting science. I'm refuting a fucking opinion from Cambridge. And yet, so that was published 2018, and then fucking London firm signs deal to grow cannabis in North Macedonia for, M M Macedonia for medical use. And it's like, yeah, Cambridge, yeah, you're fucking doing that while people are making money off this shit. It just seems so disingenuous to me. Where it's just like, yeah, London is like fucking, you know, happy to make money off of whatever's fucking profitable, but they'll do this bullshit science where it's like, the same, the same thing. N need for much more research. Little effort has been put into studying cannabis compared to that into alcohol or recreational drugs. Effects on cannabis use on other psychiatric disorders need to be further examined. Uh, literally 1980, 1980, Raphael was studying the effects of of CBD and schizophrenia and potential treatment for schizophrenia with CBD. 1980. So, like, shut the fuck up. Um, and the effects of... Uh, so, so, with some early reports claiming its use is beneficial for disordered, so, disorders such as PTSD and depression and others, that it increases the risk. The role of the cannabis composition needs to be further examined in such studies, and it is still unclear of what specific concentrations CBD might outweigh any uh, harmful effects on THC. Uh, and again, 1980, they were talking about CBD. Uh, specifically for its anti-psychotic effects. And then the effects of cannabis and THC, or cannabis and tobacco. Uh, so 
So, and it's like saying that, yes, they might produce drugs that has important me uh, medicinal use. But like, that is the entire idea. Is like, that is the community. And the community is trying to make these medicinal things. But meanwhile, you know, the, the discovery of insulin, 1922, right? And then, like, da, 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 everybody's trying to do it. Everybody's trying to do it. And then, like, literally, 1923, uh, they learned more about it. And then they... They won a Nobel Prize within a year. The first injection happened in 22. So the first human use was in 21. And it was, well, shit. The experiments began in 21, but the discovery was in 22 when it was the first injection. Uh, and then they got the Nobel Prize. And then, you know, they got production. So, and then they prolonged the whatever, and then they continued to refine it. But it took a year. It took a year from the formulation to that. And then it's like, okay, what's this? So you know that May 25th, you know what that is. It's the 25th of May. And you know what the 93 or 33 is? It's 1933. So this is a 90, this is not even 100 years old. And this is a cannabis fluid extract in Detroit. Maybe it's 1833, actually. No, yeah, it's probably 1833 because that's prohibition. So this is over 100 years old. Like, holy fuck. You know? So... What? And then meanwhile, you have like 1798, you have fucking the Greeks in like 450 to 200 BC, you, you have 200 AD, you know, like you have all of this use, and then you have all this shit going on. And in the 1970s, you have the Schedule 1 drug. In 1937, you have the Cannabis Tax Act, the, the Marijuana Tax Act, you know? It's treating epilepsy in 1000 to 1500 AD, you know? So it's like you want. It's like, oh, we need much more research. He's like, yeah, it takes a fucking year for insulin to hit the market. It takes a fucking year. And yet this stuff has been, like, people have been using this since before Christ. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I don't understand your arrogance and just saying that it's like, there's no... We just need to pump the brakes, man. It's like, yeah, we should probably pump the fucking brakes on the opiate use, too. We should probably pump the brake on the benzo use. We should probably pump the brakes on alcohol. So, yeah. Congratulations, we should probably have moderation. Your point is, oh, it's weed's fault. Oh, it's weed's fault that the current generations are immoderate. Oh, it's not that we had a collapse of a worldview. It's not because of like, you know, the, the fact that we no longer have members of community, any of these things. And also, so this is another thing that I, uh, I, I this is just a hodgepodge thought, but so um, if you're gonna have decentralization, you're gonna need to abolish the family. And if you're going to have the family, you're going to need to have localism. You cannot have a decentralized family. I completely, that's so silly. Because it's the idea of like saying, so it's like humans are a communal animal. You can say that they're an individual animal, but Walt, uh, Rolf Waldo Emerson had said that man is not an island. Aristotle said that the human who lives without the city is either god or beast. You know, so like you have these ideas that human, the human being is a communal animal since the very beginning of time. And you can do that through different ways. You can do that through your community. You can do that through your church. You can do that through your city. You can do that through these things that have, like, you know, a direct connection to you. So it's like you work at the garden and you volunteer, like, 15 hours a week. They give you free food. You know, so it's like this sort of communal thing. And this is how human societies work. Or you can do it with your family, you know, where you're intermarrying your third cousin. And so, like, the resources never really leave the region or leave the family. And so you have this generational structure of like people taking care of one another and humans need this they need this for feeling like a part of something they need this for context they need this for meaning people don't want to make up the the purpose of life every day so you know it's like it's frustrating when people push for both of those things at once where it's like you can't just like go out and live in the middle of nowhere with your wife and make kids dude that's called abuse like it's like but i'm a great man but i'm the best man who's ever lived i'm the smartest and the funniest and the most productive and i can definitely fucking grow a plant and it's like no you can't no you can't you're a fucking wuss who's never had to do anything in your fucking life most of the time you just drove around and just got fucking shit handed to you and you think that you have the backbone to have an entire field willing to like able to feed what 100 people even with the automated machines i don't fucking believe you I don't fucking believe you. I think that you're going to move into an isolated place with no infrastructure and then yell at your wife while the kids grow up with no resources. 
So fuck decentralized family. Fuck that entire idea. I think it's so stupid. And that was a side thing. So let's get into the next tweet. I'm also mad at them. Um, so this is just uh, an idea of how people use uh, people drink. This is the study that's from the I don't, I don't know what that is, but uh, in study one they examined the influence of 882 different social networks members binge drinking uh, on 321 emerging adults binge drinking using a cross-sectional design and social network member recruit recruitment. Romantic partner binge drinking was found to be a significant predictor of emerging adult binge drinking, while peer, parent, and sibling binge drinking were not. To study social network influence on drinking motives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, my joke is, are you a romantic or are you an alcoholic? Does time fly because you're having fun or totally schmacked? Uh, because, yeah, like, it's just funny that it's like, yeah, people, because they're like trying to start a relationship, fall into this alcoholic trap, and then maybe move out into the country and get drunk together and just keep shouting. Anyways, anyways, uh, so this is a fascinating uh, case report, and it's about a guy with tics. And so the, uh, the the family history was negative, except for the father's habit to clear his throat quite often. I could have done better at st starting this selection on these things, but uh, he appeared fit and well. Uh, in general, examination was normal. Neurological examination revealed no further pathological signs and psychiatric assessment was not suggestive of relevant cognitive or psychiatric comorbidities besides the current social isolation. Baseline laboratory tests included differential serum copper indices, indices, indices and antibody uh, were within normal ranges. Uh, so everything was age appropriate. In summary, they expect a late onset Tourette's exacerbated by stopping self-treatment with cannabis. So he was smoking weed in the beginning. Uh, and in dawn onset, secondary or transitory tics disorder cannot be fully ruled out. Uh, Tyroprid was administered, but showed no significant symptom relief. Owing to the therapeutic benefit of cannabis for his symptoms together with their relatively acute onset following cessation, uh, we considered a trial of Sativex spray. Uh, application of three doses in 15 minute intervals resulted in a dramatic decrease of symptom expression. Uh, premature feeling vanished and intensity of motor and phonic tics were reduced clearly. Um, described as greater than 90% by the patient. The effect lasted four hours before the tics started to return. No relevant side effects besides cheerfulness and a feeling of relaxation. Uh, this is a tincture of plant, plant extracts with a defined THC to CBD ratio, including minor qualities of other plant derivatives. Application is by spray, uh, one dose releasing 2.5 milligram THC and 2.5 or 2.7 THC and 2.5 CBD. Uh, the effect is seen two to four hours, just minutes after application up to 12 days puffs per day can be used in comparison with a commonly used group of neuroleptics, which pose risk of Disturbances, uh, all this fancy shit, I don't know. Weight change, sedation, and uh, prolongation. So I'm guessing that means tick. Uh, the side effects are supposedly to be of uh, Sativex are nabiximals are supposedly less severe, being mainly dizziness, dry mouth, and fatigue. And there's a wide variety of other possible cannabis or THC associated side effects, mostly represented in recreational users, including the risk of psychosis and in predisposed individuals. So this is mentioning that. Uh, med medicinal or medical application in the neurological context, which has been described for uh, and headache, is estimately pros minor risk through standard dosing, application, and preparations. Uh, and this is just the theory of why that's happening. Um, and it, it, it is a follow up from two other uh, reports that show a considerable uh, potential for this. And uh, based on our case, in line with previous reports, we propose that uh, Sativex might be an effective addition to acute or as required trick treat tick treatment under specialist guidance, especially for predict predictable situations in the short term when severely disabling or stigmatizing tricks ticks are anticipated. So, like, if you're about to do public speaking, if you're about to do public speaking, and uh, you have a tick, and you're just like, you know, doing that, and then like this can just like make you, you know. But like this is the video of it and uh it's oh cool but this is the video of it and it only has 12 views which is like incredible because this is i mean it's clear i think that so that was the that was the trial behind it or that was the case study behind it case report and then like this is the uh let me let me get out of here actually let me just well i'll get into this corner I think I'll just hide my my face right now, and I'll just let this play. Hey. 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 
Zeigefinger zur Nase gehen. Mit dem linken Zeigefinger zur Nase gehen. Entspannt hinsetzen. Versuchen Sie mal die Ticks längstmöglich zu unterdrücken. So, uh, yeah, I thought that was incredible. Um, and you can, you know, check this out on your own. But I just thought that that was very worth review. And, I mean, yeah, again, it only has 12 views. So, like, I think that this should really, it deserves more attention. Um, and I think it is a legitimate option. Uh, I mean... Like, I, I think that stands for itself. I think that the case is interesting, and we can talk about his history of cannabis use. But, um, you know, I just, uh, we can talk about, we can talk about his cannabis use, but I don't think that that ignores the effectiveness, especially in consideration to other medications. Um, and this is just from Green Entrepreneur. Um... And then we're just fighting with the VA. You know, saying making ill veterans even worse off than before. Uh, research to date does not support cannabis as an effective PTSD treatment. Uh, and some studies suggest that cannabis can be harmful. Jen Malarkey begs to differ. Merkley begs to differ. So, I mean, we'll see. I think, I, I mean, again, so it's like, does, it's like, okay, okay, man, okay, okay, is weed going to cure PTSD? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think it's going to make it not an issue. Do you think antipsychotics are? Do you think that we no longer have PTSD as a crisis in this country because we have antipsychotics? No, we still have that issue. So let's give cannabis the same expectations, where it's like it might help and work for some people. It's not going to eliminate the issue. That's why you give veterans the option to try it because it's like no we don't want all veterans to be taking this medical medical option we want those who are like i don't really feel the antipsychotics man like they really just put me out to lunch and it's like hard for me to, to like focus and like get back to where i am and like you know i just don't really want to be risking that with these heavy medications so like i honestly prefer the lighter experience of cannabis and I, I i've taken the risk profile into account and i prefer to be doing that that guy should be having cannabis that guy should be on it you know everybody else eh, do what you want you know but that guy i believe in his right to do what he wants uh especially considering that he fucking died for me dude or he didn't he put himself in a position in which he could have died for me so i appreciate that take whatever medicine you want um here we got the toads the toads i made satanist in it we got ba we got satanist and we got betsy o ross i think that's her name <laughs> you boring whoring fork fucking i don't even know what fork fucking is but it sounds interesting so we're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna be working on the contest now so i mean just to give you a little bit of a background so i'm just adapting this play um to a modern audience um
Oh. So what we're doing here is we're taking the the frogs, which is a play by Aristophanes, and we're updating it into our vernacular. Um, and I wanted to do something like this to first off, uh, the person who reads this is going to be in a better position to read the toads because they're going to be reading essentially the same play, um, just with different language and different jokes. Um, but it'll be the same structure of that, and I feel like that'll make it easier to make the jump and to bridge the gap um and that's kind of the point is just to show people that you know classical lit ain't broke you know My claim to character. I, uh, this is dead air essentially, but this is how you. This is how you know you're writing a thing. The the original is uh, Euripides says, "Give me no lectures, I won't let go of the chair." I say I'm better at the art than he is, and I made Tennessee Williams say, "I won't let go, I won't let go. I'm double the man of this here hoe. I claim superiority of craftsmanship over this flit." Uh, and then Franklin, and then Dionysius says, "Why so quiet, Aeschylus? You hear his claim." And then Franklin says, "Speak up. You hit. The, you hear the sp ship being sprayed." Um, and then William says, so distant and aloof at first, the same pretentious tricks as his novels. His novels twits. Novels twits. Franklin, don't speak out of place now. And then, like, so then he'd say, Euripides said, he'll be so haughtily aloof at first, the same way he tried to mystify us in his tragedies. And then Dionysius said, careful, my friend, don't speak so too confidently. Uh...
Okay, so yeah, we're at the 41 minute mark, so we're gonna switch into some music stuff, but I just wanted to write on air a little bit just to, you know, I want I want to do some more writing streams in the future too, and I just wanna get that normalized and the process, da, 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 you know, just to show that we got nothing done. It was only a few minutes, but like what we got, oh, I don't even know. I'm assuming this is like what, 100, pay, 100 words? 117 words, so you know, it's, it's going slow, but it's difficult to do it live, whatever. That's just abba 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 da. But that's what I'm currently working on. I think that there's a lot of laughs to be had. I, I want to get that done by the end of the month, hopefully. I was going to do it by like next week, but then I just got busy. Uh, but uh, so let's, uh, let's, let's listen to this. This is a new shot. Best fucking guy ever. Fucking handsome boy. Check him out on Instagram. Check him out on everything, man. Something I just had as a thought was uh, earlier was that confidence is a total trick and that humility is so much more important because as in the Christian philosophy, as in Hellenistic philosophy and most philosophies, there's a distinction between courage and just being stupid. You know, like the man who runs into danger because he does not recognize it is not a brave man. He's a broken man. He's more of a liability than anything. However, the courageous man is the man who recognizes that the odds are against him, but he goes against fear and goes into the situation and essentially 
potentially sacrifices himself for the sake of glory or victory you know but it's it's the calculation it's not simply bravery it's a lot of things it's skill it's muscle it's the ability it's the dedication and it's it's the assessment of risk it's not simply being able to put oneself at risk it is also the assessment of risk and one's own ability to combat that risk it is not undue sacrifice and that's why i think confidence is totally stupid is that confidence is just hubris and that is much discussed in literature as why is that is the downfall whether that's nero caesar or whoever the fuck you know it's always hubris it's always pride it's sort of self-love like i don't think that that's a good thing at all nobody thinks that's a good thing so confidence totally overrated uh, another thing that i would like to claim is um the title things people feel but can't say or things people think that but can't say that's something i wanted to do as a comedy tour in like 2014 so Maybe I'll work on a, on a set like that, but I know that that idea is kind of cliche now. I wanted to do it like seven years ago. So, anyways. We're gonna be trying to hit TikTok soon, too, by the way. I love summer and all, like the, the fly, the fly. The one fly who's made his way up here. This is on Lovecraft, Lovecraft, the people. The best. Support the album. Full discretion. I bought it. So. I obviously support. Uh, this is Koji. This is Brady.
Ah, oh, goddammit. I should just turn autoplay off, huh? Stand on the main I could do a little bit more editing on this show, you know what I mean? I could. I could stand to do that. This should just be the intro, maybe. This is a pretty fucking good intro. Start going live, we're probably just gonna be featuring this, to be honest. I made it on this screen. You saw it here first. Castro's followers sorry American business and dump the symbolic caskets into the sea. The crowd doesn't know that confiscated funds have already been shipped to Swiss banks by members of Castro's clique. You know, just a little bit of friendly content. Anyways, that was about the show. Um, what is this? No, we don't need to customize. This is the Patreon. Uh, if you want to see more stuff, just please consider following this. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. All that. Really appreciate everything. Um, we want to just keep doing the show. And, uh, so if you liked that music video, you liked the music, Brady and I regularly, so Koji and I regularly just make stuff, uh, that's been happening for years. Uh, so anything on that could be on highlight. Uh, I might start getting back into editing now that I'm pretty comfortable and familiar doing the show. Um, writing content is already on the Patreon, uh, so obviously going to be doing that. Uh, the average classically for an author to release per month was like 10,000 words. I could do that. Um, just on the Patreon, we'll be having like, you know, 10,000 words at least per month of written content, original content. And hopefully, ev eventually, we can like spread out on to like more things, uh, you know, like uh, uh, photos, videos, etc. Just essentially media production in general. Uh, Highlight is the flagship show. Um, that is what we're kind of focused on, and that's like, you know, how we're... It's a, the central spoke to the bunch of shit that we're trying to get done. Uh, so thank you so much for checking in and supporting Highlit. And please let me know anything that you've been thinking about, whatever you want to talk about, all that stuff. Uh, we got our first dislike. We got our first dislike on the channel uh, on the Trevor Moore video. And understandably, I get it. But the reason why I made that video, I have not promoted it at all, and I will not um is just because i wanted a space to process it so like you know hey man if if that yeah i get it 
Um, no worries about that. Uh, happily, you know, that's a first milestone. You know, hopefully we can continue to grow our, exp our experience of the platform here on out. Uh, I want to experiment with live streaming soon. We're going to be doing that. Um, but until then, you know, I feel like we got the formula of the show down. I really like the tweets. Uh, so we're going to be using that for organization. Anyways, please have a good rest of your day. I'll be back Friday. This is Carlisle Fletcher with Highlight. Thank you so much for watching. And just, you know, stay, stay healthy. Keep believing what you fucking think, you know? Yeah.